Hello and welcome to the second of the practical films from the Redox topic. This one's not about metal displacement anymore, it's about halogen displacement, but once again it's really just designed to try and help you understand what was going on in the experiment and perhaps to highlight some of the observations that you might have missed. Okay, so perhaps while we're going through these experiments it would be a good idea for you to be thinking about what's been oxidized and reduced and what the oxidizing agent and the reducing agent were in the reactant in the reactions and also whether you can write equations for the reactions which is something I'll be going through here too okay so the first job is to mix the halogens with dichloromethane so let's have a look at uh, the well, that part of the experiment now so having put a bit of dichloromethane into each of the tubes we put a bit of chlorine water bit of bromine water and a bit of iodine water into each one and we'll give them a bit of a shake and we'll see what color they are and as we can see the iodine one is quite a nice um, shade of pink purple the bromine is ready orange but it depends how intense it is it can look quite yellow and the chlorine is most definitely colorless and it's really important to remember uh, in this practical that the dichloromethane is not part of the reaction right it's just there to tell us which halogen is present now remember that by halogen we mean the elements so that's Cl2 Br2 and I2 as opposed to the halides which are ions okay it's like Cl minus Br minus and I minus they're the halide ions they're always colorless okay whereas these things are colored and they're molecules so we mix, in other words, we, with the point of mixing the halogens with the dichloromethane at the start is so that we can see what color they're going to be in dichloromethane because we're going to add dichloromethane to every one of our experiments so that we can decide what halogen is actually present at the end of the reaction. Okay, So it's important to remember what colors we've seen from the dichloromethane. Anyway. Let's start by having a look at the reactions of potassium chloride with the other two halogens. Okay, so having put a bit of potassium chloride into each of two test tubes, we put a bit of iodine water into one, the one on the right, a bit of bromine water into the one on the left, and we'll give them a little bit of a shake so that the two substances can mix together. And then we'll add a bit of dichloromethane and give it a shake some more so that any halogen that is around can end up in that dichloromethane. And then looking at the colors, remember we're looking at the color of the bottom layer here, we can see that the left hand tube has definitely got bromine in and the right hand tube, because it's pink, has definitely got some iodine in. Okay, so as we saw there, when we added iodine water to potassium chloride, uh, the dichloromethane showed that iodine was actually present afterwards. And we started off with iodine and chloride ions. So in other words, the iodine hasn't changed. So we must have in our test tube exactly what we started with. Now if that's the case, then the iodine molecules were not able to take electrons from the chloride ions. Remember, the chloride ions have got the spare electron because they're negatively charged. But if iodine isn't turning into iodide, then the iodine molecules obviously can't take electrons from chloride ions. Okay, So iodine is not a strong enough oxidizing agent to oxidize chloride. If we have a look at what happened with the bromine water and the potassium chloride, well this time we're starting not with iodine as our element, but with bromine, and we've got chloride ions again. Okay, The colour of the dichloromethane again, this shows the bromine is present after the reaction is finished, or well, there, there was no reaction, Okay, because we've got exactly what we started with. If they'd reacted together, we'd have chlorine and the bromine would have turned to bromide. But because this hasn't happened, then the bromine must not be able to oxidize the chloride ions. It can't take the electrons away from chloride. So bromine's not a good enough oxidizing agent to oxidize chloride. In other words, chlorine is a better oxidizing agent than bromine. 
Now if we have a look at the practicals that involve potassium bromide, so we're going to be mixing iodine and chlorine with potassium bromide. And let's see what happens there. Okay, so having added a bit of potassium bromide this time to our two tubes, we're adding chlorine water to the left hand tube and a bit of iodine water to the right hand tube. Once again, we'll give them a bit of a shake before we add our dichloromethane. And this time, we can see, once the colour's been allowed to settle just a little bit, that we've got um, that orange colour from bromine in our left tube. Remember, there wasn't any bromine to begin with. It was bromide ions. And we've got a bit of purple from the iodine, which we actually put in in the first place. OK, so when we added the chlorine water, so remember that just contains chlorine. It's just chlorine dissolved in water. We're starting with chlorine, and we've got bromide ions in the potassium bromide. But at the end of the reaction, that is to say the, uh, the dichloromethane is showing us what products are present, it's gone orange. So there's bromine in the mixture, which means that bromide ions have reacted with chlorine. They must have lost their electrons, and the chlorine must have gained those electrons, becoming chloride. Okay, so in other words, what's happened here is that bromide ions have turned into bromine. We must have had two of these bromide ions. Okay, they've reacted with chlorine, which has gained those two electrons and turned into two chloride ions. I'm not spending a great deal of time on how I'm actually constructing these equations because that was covered in another film. Okay, but hopefully you can see here that the chlorine ends up with the electrons and the bromide ions, the bromide ions have lost them. So chlorine can oxidize bromine. Remember from the last experiment, bromine could not oxidize chlorine. And when we added iodine water to potassium bromide, we started with iodine and bromide ions. The colour of the dichloromethane was pink at the end, so that shows that iodine is present. But that's what we started with. So in other words, there was no reaction here. So iodine couldn't take electrons from the bromide ions. Iodine's not a good enough oxidising agent to oxidise bromide. So bromine must be a better oxidising agent than iodine. Moving on finally to the potassium iodide reactions, let's have a quick look at what happened there. These were sometimes a little bit more difficult to see. Right, so having put some potassium iodide into our two tubes, this time we're adding chlorine water to the one on the left, bromine water to the one on the right, and it's often quite obvious to see that something has happened straight away with these. Um, but let's give them a bit of a shake as usual, and then we'll add a bit of dichloromethane so that we can see which halogen is present. Remember, we're looking at the colour of the bottom layer here. So we'll just give them a bit more of a shake. And let's have a quick look at the bottom layer. So in here, it's not all that clear to see. So we'll just come back to that one in just a moment. The one on the left is quite obviously purple, as you can see there. But if you have a good close look at the one on the right, you can see it's purple too. When we put the chlorine water, so that's chlorine molecules, in with the potassium iodide, so that's iodide ions, the, what the dichloromethane turning pink or purple showed us was that iodine was present. There wasn't any iodine to start with. So in other words, the iodide ions must have turned into iodine. If I had an iodine molecule, I must have had two of them. What took those electrons away? Well, it must have been the chlorine molecules. OK, and if chlorine molecules gain two electrons, they become two chloride ions. OK, so there's our balanced redox equation for that process. And once again, it's the dichloromethane showing us that we've got some iodine present once these two things have been mixed. And finally, um, for the reactions, that is, um, we mixed bromine water with potassium iodide. So we started with bromine as our element, the halogen and iodide as our halide, that's the ion. Once again, we can see a pink or purple colour at the end uh, in the dichloromethane, indicating that iodine is present. So there has been a reaction once again, and the iodide ions lost electrons, turning into iodine as before, 
just shown you this happening in the previous equation. So iodide turned into iodine. And in the process, bromine gained the electrons and became bromide ions. So bromine was able to oxidize iodine or iodide, right? Bromine can take electrons away from iodide ions. So whilst iodine wasn't a good enough oxidize, uh, oxidizing agent to oxidize bromide, bromine is a good enough oxidizing agent to oxidize iodide. So summing up what we've seen there, well, let's have a think about this, okay? Which halogen was the best at taking electrons from others? Well, chlorine water reacted with potassium bromide and potassium iodide. So chlorine was the best at taking electrons. Chlorine is the strongest oxidizing agent of these three elements. Which one was the best at giving away electrons? Well, iodide ions reacted with bromine water and with chlorine water. So iodide was the best at giving away electrons. So iodine is the best reducing agent or it's the most easily oxidized, okay? Right, last thing to mention is about writing equations. And just remember, compared to the metal displacement reactions, where our metals were always single atoms in the equation, that is to say we didn't see zinc two as a formula, halogens always come in pairs. Okay, but their ions don't, so we never ever write Cl minus twice. Okay, we can have two chloride ions that's different to a two chlorine atoms joined together with a negative charge. Okay, the molecules with no charge always have a two after them, that is to say, two atoms joined together. The ions are always separate species. Okay, um, as usual with these things um, and no less because it's a practical film no more I suppose but um, please comment if you've got any questions um, please come and ask me and I'll try and try my best to explain any kind of confusing bits to you um, should hopefully be getting quite good at identifying oxidizing and reducing agents by now and if you still feel that that's really quite difficult then practice some problems from uh, your books or from some of the resources that get posted or just like I say ask me for a bit of help.